everybody welcome back to the channel this is mtg ghoul dude and today i wanted to cover one of the great cards that we got in outlaws of thunder junction with your boy giraffe the flesh right now this is one of those exclusive uh wanted poster cards and i am looking to acquire the giraffe and the gisa for my personal collection and i do believe a good friend of mine is sending one my way so if that is true we might be getting in a uh and what's in the box here before too long with or maybe sooner rather than later because the shipping in the united states postal service is not all that great all the time but let's go on ahead and get into giraffe the flesh right and some of the ideas that i came up with brewing around this commander so for two and a blue you get a two three legendary creature human warlock whenever you cast a spell during your turn other than your first spell that turn create a 2-2 two, two blue black zombie rogue creature token the stipulation here is that you can only cast the spells on your turn so any other time you don't get one and the second line is whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each other zombie that entered the battlefield under your control this turn now i went in went two different directions with this one one is the tried and true zombie route because you know your boy loves zombies but i also in testing found that this would be a great commander for another it's gonna another controversial blue strategy that a lot of people have picked up on if you looked at eda trek recently but let's go on ahead and get into our first uh and the most important strategy and that's going to be zombies so starting off we want to play jason bright glowing prophet now these are just suggestions in my opinion you don't have to take these as gospel or nothing these are just my opinions on cards that i would put in this deck if i had it or if i was building this type of build jason would be great for a card advantage as long as you're you know if its power was different from its base power, sure. I mean, we're getting zombies tokens that are going to be buffed for however many zombies we control. And I mean, the more zombies we play, the bigger the tokens get, and so on and so on. And then if you have any of the lords, that just makes them even better. <clears throat> but he also has the ability come fly with me. For two generic, you can sacrifice a creature, put a counter on target creature you control, and it gains flying a turn a turn. Now, this one is not as good as some of the other flying lords that we have, such as Giraffe, Visionary, Stitcher, which would also be a great fit. But for this, this would be better in a zombie-centric build, because this is only, its ability is sacrificing non-token creatures. So you'd have to play actual, factual card zombies and not make tokens <laughs> to take advantage of his ability. Because for two and a blue, you get a 1-4. Like I said, he makes zombies fly. And you can tap and make an X blue, XX blue zombie creature token where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness. Now, this one has had it like his own deck around like big butts matter. But I feel like the, the ability to give zombies flying is such a great amenity. Like even Wonder would be great in this deck because you can find a way to sacrifice it to Giraffe to give all your creatures flying without even having to block with it or having to sacrifice it in any other way or having your opponents kill it but we also have horde wing scob for four and a blue it is a zombie whore and it has flying and other zombies you control have flying whenever one or more zombies you control do combat damage to one of more of your opponents you may draw cards equal to the number of opponents dealt damage this way which accentuates you to do more damage to more opponents but if you do you discard that many cards so it's kind of filtering it's not card advantage but it's filtering in a way and of course we got to have the good old cleaver scop so we can make copies of all the tokens and all the zombies that we have and this does make token copies of your your zero zero rogues but it, well your two two rogues but it's not as good because you're just going to make two copies of tokens 
So this one would be a, a fringe include if you wanted to build it as zombies to do more stuff with your zombies. And then of course we have to throw in the Eternal Skylore because it just gives zombie tokens flying. And if you don't have any of the other lords, your tokens are going to still need evasion. But we also have cards like Bloodline Pretender that would get huge if you can keep throwing out those zombie tokens. And we also have changelings, like the old school Lorwyn changelings, to be able to do all that other good stuff. And Moth Dust changeling. And of course you cannot play a deck like this without playing Rise from the Tides. Now yes, it is kind of centric on you playing instants and sorceries. But you're going to do that anyway because you're in a blue deck. I mean, it just it just comes with the premise of playing blue. But Rise from the Tides would be a great include because not only will you make zombies, but it'll trigger Giraffe and you'll just make just an, um, a huge amount of zombies. Especially if you can find a way to high tide and then play this so you get an extra zombie. It just makes it even better because now all your other zombies get plus one, plus one whenever they come in. But I feel like it would be even better if you could find a way for all of them to trigger. And with the Kinder Discovery for like seven zombies, for that's seven more cards you can draw. And if you can find a way to keep looping this, it's just that much better. But the second, uh, the second strategy I wanted to go over was artifacts. I wanted to. I played around with it on Arena a little bit, and it's I couldn't go far, but I got pretty close to an Eggs list built, a Cheerios list built, and I feel like Urza Lord High Artificer would be great in a Cheerios-based list with Jeroff as the commander. Yeah, you're going to be making, you know, all kinds of artifacts, but Urza would help fill the board help you keep making mana to keep casting spells. Spells like Mishra's Bobble would just keep making zombies. Tormod's Crypt to make a zombie for Spellbook would maximum no maximum hand size. The Ornithopter is a good blocker early on in the game. <clears throat> and then Memnite. And then you want to take advantage the most of those abilities with cards like Thought Monitor, which draw two cards when it enters, and especially if you have already amassed a large amount of artifacts, the cheaper the better. Cards like Badolkin Archmage would help you draw more cards to help fuel that storm count. Forensic Gadgeteer would make more artifacts for Urza to keep helping you cast spells, because it's whenever you cast an artifact spell, so you just making play a Mishra's Bobble, you get two mana pretty much. And not to mention the fact that you can loop multiple spells with whole breaker horror, and you could just make a enormous amount of zombies out of this and just keep flickering your zero drop rocks back and forth. But if you're not looking to break the bank with whole breaker horror, you can play cards like Rebuild to help return all your artifacts back to your hand. And Paradoxical Outcome will help play all those rocks out and then tap them all for mana, bring them back to your hand, draw more cards, play them all back out again, and maybe find a way to bring Paradoxical or any of those other spells back to your hand to be able to play them all again, all while using Aetherflux Reservoir to doom your opponents and just make them all scared to see how fast you can get that... Uh, that Death Ray off to the races. But. That is going to be it for my. Little deck tech kind of sort of. My strategy guide for Giraffe the Flesh Rite. I hope everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I kind of went a little left field with this one. And I know it isn't usually my type of deck. But you know I feel like the Eggs Cheerios type deck. Really could put up a good fight against any other regular zombie deck but that will be up for you guys to let me know down in the comments below and that's going to be it and i will see you guys next time in the graveyard